Hello. Welcome to the Knaves Guild. So, um, tonight uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit again. Earlier today we did some globe making, we did some um, some more of the Lives of Gethra podcast, um, and started recounting some of those stories from my website. So, today we're going to get started, uh, or this evening we're going to get started with something a little new, which is the um, World of Gethra um, wiki. This will be a way that we can have all of our world building tracked, public, for you guys to access, and um, and it'll just look great. It'll feel like this is the published world that we've come up with. Um, so we're going to dive into that, so here we go. I have started up on World Anvil, which is a uh, great world building site for game masters, for Dungeons and Dragons, for other tabletop role playing games, or even just for authors. Um, so we're going to get started here. There's literally nothing here. And we're just going to dive in. All right. So we want to add in a bit of a description to the to the home page there. All right. There we are. So we're going to take a moment to just describe what is the world of Gethra like and what is what is the point of this place. So the world of Gethra is an interactive fantasy role-playing setting curated by author N.A. Verdenhill. Its stories unfold on twitch.tv and on .com. This part is, part is a little monotonous, but we're going to start dropping in some uh, uh, visuals and, and uh, fleshing out some of the characters that we've been reading about in the uh, podcast as well um, here on the on the wiki in a minute. So, read over this again once we get it uh, live onto the onto the homepage there. I wonder if these automatically link or probably safer off for us to add.
All right, so let's get some images in here that we can use in the articles. Uh, can I just drag those in? Let's see here. Yeah, I can. Of course, it's got stuff from other world building projects of mine. Um, all right, got that. We've got, we're going to want the Navesguild logo probably. So I'll just get this stuff set up. Going to want a map, of course. Well, we've got some of the information in there to get started on the wiki. Um, so, I'm not sure why that image isn't displaying. Maybe I'll use this one. All right, well, we'll have to come back to the image, it looks like. Yeah, neither of those worked. All right, maybe it just needs to uh, process that. Oh, looks like we got a follow. Thanks, hey guys. Great, all right. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm gonna work on here is adding in a map for that. Yeah. Oops. Um, all right, so I've shown this a little bit on the stream already. Hello. Awesome, and now we can add pins onto the map and attach those two articles and everything like that. So basically I'm just setting up the, uh, if you just joined in, I'm uh, just working on the World of Gethra Wiki, um, which will be a spot where we can have um, all of the world building that we come up with kind of uh, curated and made publicly available uh, in a published forum for everyone uh, to kind of, you know, feel that that final contribution is, is part of the world now. Um, and so we're just getting started setting that up tonight. Um, might as well get it uh, figured out at some point. So I think we're going to start with Kadar Port here, which is um, a location we had just read about earlier in the podcast um, where Renato is. And yesterday, we also created a king who ruled here in the past, a few hundred years in the past. Um, so we're going to start populating that information here. We're going to make that a pin. I think we'll come back to these as we populate the map more. And we're just going to say that this is, let's see here, a city. Ooh, it's cool. All right, we're going to say Kadar Port is a 
sprawling harbor on Kadar Isle. Traditionally ruled by gangs and a haven for pirates. Create a new article called Kadar Port, which is a settlement. There we go. So um, let's see if that's now available on the page here. Yeah, we got a map. And if we click that, it'll take us to a little write up about Kadar port. So um, we can now edit that article and we'll be able to fill in um, some information from yesterday's uh, stream. So let's open that up. So here's our timeline. Yesterday we, we built out King Asharo. Um, so King Asharo, we learned what had been born in the year 717. He seized power over the gangs of Kadar uh, in 767, but shortly after fell ill and the next several years spent uh, addressing his illness. So at some point we'll continue to find out what happens after this because he is cured, but presumably he's not in great standing of power after falling ill um, immediately after earning, uh, you know, the rule here. So we're going to add King Asharo, we're going to mention him in this article about Kadar because, you know, this was part of the past there. So Kadar port, it is a city. Is there an option for a harbor or a port? Let's see. Nope. We'll just make it a city then. All right. Um, so Uh, I think each, each city will have a little bit of generic information. So you're established. We don't know this yet. So that's something that will get filled in uh, later. And then we also have, um, uh, let's see here, current um, sovereignty. In other words, who is ruling the city? Did I butcher the spelling here? I think it's okay. Current sovereignty, and this is... Uh, um, disputed between the different gangs of, of the city. Um, all right, and then we'll add in a write-up. Um, I mean, we'll make this a section, so it'll say history. And we'll say uh, in 717, or oops, years since Orish, 717. So this is something that we touched on uh, earlier during our podcast segment. But if I open up that uh, map here for you guys, um, so you see the this big circle here, the Orish. It's actually labeled the Orish Impact, and they've named a body of water after it, the Orish. This was a major, major meteor um, collision with Gethra that happened 1,478 years ago in the past. So where we've started reading with the characters, uh, you know, it's it's long ago that this happened, but that's was this momentous event, and that is how they track their um, their uh, their calendar, because it, it was just like a, it was a reset for many civilizations in this area. Um, so, in, in case you're ever wondering, when I say years since Orish, that is uh, how the calendar works in this world. So, in years since Orish 717, uh, King Asharo rose to power, or seized power, rather, seized power from the gangs ruling Kadar. Um, we'll add in a little bit more information, but... Oh wait, I think 717 was when he was born, yes. So he seized power in 767. Right, he was, it was exactly 50 years later, which was coincidental. Um, so uh, now nothing more about his illness yet pertains to the history of Kadar port. Um, so we're going to leave that at that, and King Asharo will get his own page where much more of his biography is, is given. Oh, great. We got a second follow. <laughs> a Gethra citizen already. <laughs> Welcome. Um, all right. Oh, it looks like also I've got that overlapping with the ad, so let's move that over here. So if anyone subscribes now, it won't be quite as hard to see. <laughs> 
There we go. Um, and then we'll say a note, uh, present day. Actually, we'll, we'll be more specific. In 1478, uh, Kadar port is once again disputed by gangs and minor factions. And I think that's the relevant history that we have for Kadar port so far from, from the podcast and from our world building. Uh, I think I will refrain from adding in all of the information from Lives of Gethra until it unfolds so that there won't be as many spoilers for you guys. Um, of course, eventually, it's all going to be here on the website. Um, I will look into if there's any way to kind of tag spoilers as such. Um, there might might be a way that we can have, you know, you can specify how caught up you are and it would hide the content that is going to be new to you. Um, so you would only see things that you knew and you could reference that. But we'll see, that's gonna be a future a future endeavor for sure. Um, but yeah, so I think here we go, we got a basic uh, uh, information. We should maybe say uh, a general note about location because it's not always gonna be named after the same <laughs> landmass. So location, Kadar Isle, um, there we go. Um, so we will make that public. Save changes. Oh, that's a good question, um, Gethra Citizen. So, um, no, you definitely don't have to read everything in order to follow along. Um, anyone who has questions, feel free to ask them. If I mention, you know, something about the Orish and you don't know what I'm talking about, I can address that again. Um, there will also be, uh, you know, when if I'm working on a on a certain setting that requires a lot of information about the Orish, let's say, I will probably at some point set up some commands so that people can just chat into the into the chat room and say, you know, like, what's this? And it'll give them a little blurb about what that is. Uh, and likewise, if, if we have any regular viewers, they might pick up on some things and be able to fill you in as well. But if you're ever feeling lost or, or confused or wondering what you need to know, uh, just feel free to ask. Um, usually it'll be something that, I, you know, I can say, well, we're looking at King Asharo and here's his exact setting and what's going on with him. Uh, and, uh, and then we go from there. All right, so it, I did save here, although it looks like it's still a draft. Oh, there we go, published, okay. So now let's take a look at that. We'll head back to here. We'll look at the map. We'll see what happens when I click Kate Airport. There we go. Location, KRL, year established. We don't know yet. I guess I should have filled in, you know, to be dated. <laughs> Current sovereign sovereignty is disputed, and there's the information we discovered about, about these people. But we didn't really fill in anything about King Asharo's, uh, you know, what happened during his reign yet, because we haven't found out if any of that's relevant to Kadar Port. So we're going to make a page for King Asharo, uh, essentially publishing what we did yesterday when we built the timeline. Um, so let's head back to there and we're going to make a new character. Yep. There we go. This character is a Sharo King. And no portrait yet. If anyone wants to submit a portrait of King Asharo, go for it. Uh, my, my, my artistic skills end at, uh, drawing maps. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, King Asharo, you're born. YSO 717. Uh, you're dead. Unknown. I shouldn't say dead. You're, you're deceased. Um, and uh, notable role. Um, you know, in, in other words, this is a collection, this is an encyclopedia of history. You know, what is this person's role in history? So we're going to say king, um, and then we'll move on to some personal details. All right, so let's have a little blurb about appearance. 
Now this isn't something we touched on at all yesterday, so maybe this is one thing that we can have our our viewers interact with. Um, I played the role of King Asharu yesterday because we didn't have anyone uh, willing to take on his role. Um, so for you guys, would either of you like to um, take on the role of King Asharu? Or I can continue making the decisions for her myself. Okay, I'll I'll move on until we until we see if anyone wants to interact. So oh uh oh Gethra Citizen is interested. Okay, so for um his appearance we need to decide where does he hail from. So if we look back at the map here these weren't really any details that we came up with yesterday. We simply learned that he ruled Kedarport. So um, we, we could decide if you'd like, uh, you can just decide, did King, the King Asharo, who is a ruler during this historical period, um, is he from King uh, Kedarport or is he uh, perhaps seen as a foreigner who came to the city and at some point during his, his time there decided this gang ruling, you know, um, uh, cesspool of of crime needs some organization and he rose to the ranks there or is it his home that he's always had he came from the great isle okay great um so traditionally most people on the great isle are fair-skinned so we can keep him being a um, a person of that descent if you'd like or he could be maybe he was a bit of a minority while he was on the great isle That's why he left. Okay, so he was a, a minority there, and and was looking for somewhere else he could call home. How how old do you think? Imagine that he was when he left the Great Isle. Keep in mind that by age fifty he ruled a city over here. So yeah, okay, I think twenty two is a good age. So we'll put that into the timeline here. So we're at a new event. We're going to say, oops, Asharo leaves the Great Isle. And he was 22. So if he was born in 717, uh, this would have been 739. Here's 739. There we go. We're not going to figure out everything down to the month and day yet. Uh, maybe at some point that detail will be nice to have on the wiki as well, but for now I'm just going to keep things to year, I think. So Asharo leaves the Great Isle in 739. Um, that's going to be going on his bio as well, and we also know now that he is of Orin descent. Oops. Um, Asharo was of Orin descent, hailing from the Great Isle. Um, would you say that he had black hair, brown hair, any other distinguishing features? Oh, and it also took 30 years for him to gain power there. Okay. You can fill it in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's the window of, of time that we have there. So, oops. Red hair. Okay. Even uh, even those of Orient descent, that would be uncommon, but not unheard of. So we can keep that. Oh, actually, sorry. If he was a minority on the Great Isle, he would not be of Orient descent. So he is probably um, like his family maybe hails from one of these other lands. Um, any any preferences there? Radrigar, the Elder Coast, or Numenacris? Okay, uh, I think I think it makes sense if he's from Radrigar. There's a that would be the most common transit of people uh, between these lands. So we're gonna say um, Radar and Resent descent. Him from the Great Isle. 
Um, yeah, so we'll say he had uh, reddish uh, brown hair, because I think that would make uh, sense for someone of Radaran descent. Um, Radaran descent in this world is, is somewhat olive-skinned, um, so you can compare, if you wanted to compare two you know, ethnicities in our own world, it might be someone, um, maybe a Latino, Latina, or uh, maybe even Asian as well, uh, some of those kind of traits. Um, um, so we'll say he was a little bit fair-haired for his, for his, uh, his background. Um, he had, oops, reddish brown hair. Uh, and did he have any other um, uh, d defining features, perhaps any scars from childhood or um, uh, maybe um, a certain look or maybe he always styled himself a certain way? going to then have a new section here once we get there. Ah, he had a, a and was recognized at times by a slit left ear. Great. Um, okay, I think that's enough. Uh, I think for characters that are in the you know really detailed lives of Gethra setting. I'm going to flush out that appearance setting a lot, but I think it's kind of fun to have for the appearance section some idea of you know what this person looked like, and we can kind of learn what they how they might have seemed to those around them. Um, so uh, history: uh, Asharo was born in 717 in uh, on the Great Isle. Um, at age 22, he left his home due to pressure from uh, from locals against his family and their lineage. He relocated to the nearest major port, which was Kadar Port. Uh, and then we'll say over the next 30 years, um, Asharo sought to restore order to the city, which was governed by gangs and criminal syndicates in, let's see here, 767. In 767, Asharo succeeded in uh, seizing majority power over the city from uh, his rivals among the gangs. Uh, I think we will note here foreigners beyond Kadar Port uh, likely saw this rise as just another gang. and waited to see if he would retain power. Because at this point, it sounds like, I mean, if it, in the present, uh, Kadar Port has, um, you know, is ruled by gangs still, or again. And so at some point, it, it, you know, throughout its history, it seems to have very uh, had a very troubled, um, a troubled time. So foreigners beyond Kadar Port likely saw the, this rise as just another gang forming, or uh, taking power, and we had to see if he would retain his new stature. Um, and then, unfortunately, he falls ill in 769, just two years later. 